Hey mortals, my name is Mika and today I'm going to be talking about how you can become a fairy cast member for your renaissance festival. This will be my first video in a professional fairy workshop masterclass series. So if you're interested in becoming a real life professional fairy, feel free to subscribe to this channel, Mika the Elf. You can also subscribe to my professional fairy channel, which is Sprout the Fae of Seeds. And if you're interested in fairy garb, like the hat that I'm wearing today, you can follow my page, Fae Realm Fashion. All of my links will be listed in the description below. So let's talk about how you can become a fairy cast member for your Renaissance Festival. Now, first of all, I am going to be mostly speaking on my personal experience working for the Ohio Renaissance Festival as Sprout the Fae of Seeds. But I will also do my best to try to kind of lump all American Renaissance festivals together. I have been researching on different things that different festivals have in common when it comes to being a fae character. And this is also actually a collab video. So today I am collabing with Mint the Fairy. He was a performer for Canterbury at the Kansas City Renaissance Festival. And the way I'm going to format this video is by taking snippets of her footage and inserting it into my video wherever it's most relevant. So I will go ahead and let Mint the Fairy introduce herself. Well, Matt, I'm Mint, and I'm collaborating with Sprout, the Fae of Seeds, today to tell you about how to get involved in a Renaissance Festival. So the number one thing that you need to know about being any character for cast at a Renaissance Festival is that, generally speaking, it is not a paying job. It is volunteer work. Now, a lot of festivals, it is literally volunteer work. They pay you absolutely nothing. They may give you meal tickets, but that's it. Some festivals do pay a little bit. Some festivals do it a little bit differently where their newbies get paid absolutely nothing. But then the more years that they do it, the more they get paid and also depends on the type of shows that they do. They might get paid a bit more. But generally speaking, being a cast member for any Renaissance Festival in America that I know of, it is basically a volunteer position. This is a labor of love. This is not the kind of job that you want if you are desperate for money. <laughs> if you are really looking to make money at the Renaissance Festival, I would suggest becoming a vendor sales associate or you could sell food, make food, you could sell tickets. I know that generally, a vendor sales associate job is going to be minimum wage or a bit more than minimum wage. If you already have a show act, let's say you work for a circus, you could apply to be an independent entertainer and you would get paid more. And you're also allowed to collect tips generally as an entertainer, but as a cast member, generally you get paid very little or none at all and you're not allowed to collect tips. So let's say that you don't care about money at all, you just want to do this for fun because you absolutely love being a fairy and especially if you're new to this, I think being a cast member is going to be probably the best route to take if you're a complete newbie and you don't know what the heck you're doing. Even if you want to be a more independent professional fairy years down the line, I think that being a cast member is a great place to start. It's a great place to learn how to socialize, how to come out of your shell, how to discover your character, how to discover how you're going to perform and what skills and what performances work best for you. It is a fantastic learning opportunity, especially if you have never had any kind of performance background or education. You get to learn all of that kind of stuff being a cast member. So what will staff be looking for in new coming cast members? Generally speaking, I think this is kind of a a, a good generalized number one thing that festivals are looking for in new cast members is your willingness to play. If you are willing to go out there and be a goofball and just be willing to play a character and to be silly without having major social anxiety hold you back, that's really the main thing that they're looking for. Most festival cast staff are very inclusive, even when it comes to performance quality, especially since most cast is a volunteer job. They'll basically cast anybody who's willing to do it and who is physically capable of doing it. And if you don't make cast your first year, that might just be because you're acting a little bit too shy and a little bit too soft-spoken. Being at the Renaissance Festival, you really need to be able to project your voice and you really need to be able to act silly and not be afraid to be, you know, cringe in front of patrons. If you don't make cash your first year, I would just suggest that you work on that. Work on bringing your social anxiety level down so that you are able 
to play around other people. Now let's say that you have made your festivals cast and now you want to become a fairy. Well, different festivals do this in very different ways. So some festivals, once you make it into the cast, you are allowed to pick whatever character that you would like as long as it fits within their little guilds that they have. But that is not how the Ohio Renaissance Festival works. Once you make it into cast, you have to take another audition to make it into certain guilds. So if you'd like to be a fairy, a witch, a pirate, a siren, you have to go to another audition to make it into those guilds. And that generally takes place during rehearsals, either the first rehearsal weekend, maybe the second rehearsal weekend. But Mint the Fairies Festival does things a little bit differently, so I will go ahead and let her explain how her festival does it. I've got a secret. You know that Renaissance Festival that you love going to? Well, they want you to be a part of it. They want you to be there and get involved. My local fair switched from an audition process to an application process solely for the reason of making getting your information and your interest level to management easier and more effective and less intimidating. Because it's true, they want you to be involved. It's a great time. It's, it really is um, a community theater opportunity, if you will. The first step in getting involved typically is a recruitment event. Mine kind of hosts it as a party, word of mouth, Facebook event, emails, whatever, where each segment of cast has a little booth where they talk about their goals and aspirations and what plans for the upcoming season. So it'll be like you can walk and see what court is looking for or what the village needs or fairy tales or mermaids. And it's a lot of information at once. And then management is also there and ready to talk to you and answer your questions. And it's overall a lot of fun and way less scary than I thought it would be. So now let me tell you what kind of qualities that the Ohio Renaissance Festival is looking in cast members who are auditioning to become a Fae. Now the number one thing that I think that the festival is looking for is actually our aesthetic when we're in character. Now you do not have to have a character established yet, you do not have to have any garb yet when you audition, but I really think that having garb having a character, having a design set out is going to give you extra brownie points for making it into the Fae. Back when I auditioned in 2020, I had a complete full set of garb ready to go. And I really think that is one of the major things that helped me get into the guild in the first place was because I already had my garb and it was good garb that they liked. So they knew that I wouldn't have to worry about anything like that. All I had to worry about was like getting my character actually established and learning how to improv and how to perform as my character. So having certain things established about your character is probably really gonna help you make it into the Fae Guild. However, keep in mind that if you have a certain character concept. Let's say you really want to be a mushroom fairy. There can only be one mushroom fairy at the festival, or on cast at least, and she already exists. So if you already have a character established and you're coming in as a newbie, you have to make sure that there's not another fae already on cast who has your character concept. Another example is, let's say you want a character who's really involved with seeds. Well, I am the fae of seeds, therefore you cannot make any of your main concepts around seeds. Now, if you wanna do like little bitty insignificant seed related things, let's say you want like a flower crown that has some acorns in it, cause acorns are seeds. That's not a big deal at all. I don't care about that at all. But when it comes to main character concepts, when it comes to the main fairy's job, you cannot take the same concept from another fairy. Keep that in mind when you're auditioning. The next thing is, again, like I said before, your willingness to play. Now. With the Fae, they are gonna be just a little bit more strict with that because they want the Fae to act very otherworldly. They told us specifically, it's not enough for us to look otherworldly because there are fairies at other festivals who look amazing. They look very otherworldly, but they don't really interact with the patrons or they only interact with children. And they specifically told us that they do not want that for us. They want us to be very otherworldly acting with everyone. So if you are willing to play, but you're still feeling a bit shy, you can still make it on the cast but being a fairy might not be for you yet. It might be more beneficial for you to start off as like a villager character, really come out of your shell your first year, and then you can audition again to be a fae the next year. But in order to be a fae, you need to really be able to just act absolutely ridiculous and not care. <laughs> because the Fae are very mischievous. The Fae love to play. The Fae love to play pranks. The Fae love to mock and mimic people. So that is a very important quality 
for at least the Ohio Renaissance Festival. The next thing is your ability to interact with children. Being a fae, our number one audience is children. Of course, we need to be able to entertain adults as well, but naturally, being a fairy, our biggest fans are going to be the children. If you're the type of person who feels like you just cannot stand children, you cannot stand being around them, you don't like to play with them, you don't inter like to interact with them, being a fae is probably not for you. There are other jobs you can take as a fairy. I have seen jobs where they are adult exclusive fairies, you know, a burlesque type of fairy. Um, but at a Renaissance Festival, our target audience is gonna be the children. Therefore, if you cannot stand to be around children, and being a fae at a festival is probably not for you. The next and probably last thing that they are looking for for new fae is your movement and your physical ability. The fae are not statues. They really want us to be able to move otherworldly as well as act otherworldly as well as look otherworldly. You do not have to be a pro athlete. <laughs> You do not have to be like super physically fit or anything like that. You just need to be physically fit enough to survive a Renaissance Festival day. Some of the things that are required at the Fae are, and this is this goes to all cast members, you need to be in the parade. The parade's a pretty long walk. Every single cast member is required to be in the parade with only a few exceptions. Number two, you need to perform in one of the shows. Now there is a dance show, there is a choir show, and there is heart, which is kind of like helping out with the joust and stuff like that. The only super physical show out of those is the dance show, which is not that physical. But again, like I said, you just need to be physically fit enough to survive a Renaissance Festival day. Now this doesn't mean that if you are physically disabled in some way that they can't make exceptions for you. Um, I'm sure they could. They're, the Ohio Renaissance Festival cast is extremely inclusive. Um, I'm sure if you had some sort of physical thing going on that makes it to where you can't move very well, I'm sure the festival would make exceptions. But generally speaking, the festival wants us to be able to move pretty well. Now, let's say you have successfully made it into your festival's fake cast. Good job, congratulations. Now let's talk about some of the things that will be required of you once you actually get to the festival. Now usually with cast, you have like a couple of months or more of rehearsals to get all of this stuff together. So don't worry, don't panic. You should generally have plenty of time to get your garb ready, your character ready, anything else that you need to work on. We have rehearsals for that. Different festivals have different amounts of rehearsals. Ohio has about two months of rehearsals only on Saturdays and Sundays. I believe the Kentucky Fest rehearsal process lasts like several months longer. So yeah, it really just depends on your individual festival. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the requirements for the Ohio Renaissance Festival's Fay cast. Now, the festival doesn't actually officially hire you until dress rehearsal weekend. So if you made it into Fay cast and you don't meet up to the requirements, that the festival provides for you, they will recast you as a villager or not hire you. If you are not ready to be your fake character by dress rehearsal weekend, you will not perform as your fake character during the run. So before you audition to be a fake, it is important to know what your requirements are going to be and be realistic with yourself. Are you going to be able to accomplish these requirements by the time the festival comes around? Now, the number one thing that the fake are required other than just like generally look and act otherworldly is we must have non-human skin color. Now, there can be exceptions to this. For one, Nissa the gnome. She's a gnome. Gnomes and lore do not have non-human skin. They look like little humans, basically, with top hats or pointy hats. So she really focuses on the traditional gnome aesthetic, which does not include non-human skin. Therefore, she's an exception. Another one is a character that we had last year, Fawn. She was basically a fawn or like a deer person and her makeup included a lot of kind of brownish tan cream colors and so naturally her colors kind of looked similar to her actual skin tone but she made it look deer enough so you could tell like oh that's a deer person the goal here is to look otherworldly so there absolutely can be exceptions to that rule but basically they want us to stand out from patrons and they want us to stand out from human villagers. They want us to look like we're from the Fey realm or at least, you know, a, a place of magic. Some of the Fey are from the human realm, but that's 
whatever. <laughs> Basically, they want patrons to look at us and be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. That is our goal. Two is we need our character to be fleshed out enough to where we have a character. Some of the things that we need for our character are a job for our character. Now, it doesn't have to be like a job job. It can be like a power. Like Sprout's job is to help the seeds grow. But we need to have a recognizable, identifiable, and likable character. Another one is to have a distinct color scheme. Uh, this one isn't like totally strict at my festivals. It is strict at some other festivals. Like I know that Mint at some point has mentioned that at her festival, they pick colors first before anything else. And like that is their character's color scheme. Whereas at our festival, we need to have a color scheme, but it's mostly just so that we are identifiable. More than one Fae character can have the same color scheme. For example, Sprout has yellow, orange, and green. Last year, there was another Fae character who was yellow, orange, and green. But her character was different enough from mine. She was like a parrot harpy character. And that is different enough from Sprout that we thought it was perfectly fine. But having a solid color scheme just helps make our character more identifiable and they can associate our colors with the jobs that we have or the type of fae that we are. Another thing is our garb. We need to have professional looking garb. No spirit Halloween type costumes. We need garb. <laughs> we need generally no modern fabrics whatsoever. Nothing that's like too shiny or anything. Now that doesn't include like 1572's historically accurate shiny. Like if, if you're a court lady or even certain fae can have, you know, natural shinies, but no like modern day type of stuff. And they really want us to have a distinct silhouette. Now the face silhouette is totally different from the rest of cast. The general cast silhouette is like historically accurate silhouettes. So like, you know, the bodice that kind of goes in like a, a triangle shape and then the skirt kind of goes out a certain way. And the fae, it's not at all about being historically accurate necessarily. I mean, we still need to look like we belong in 1572, but we don't have to follow the fashions of real life 1572. But they still want us to have a distinct silhouette so that when they, you know, if you were to put a face silhouette, just the silhouette, just like a black silhouette in front of somebody, then they should be able to still recognize that character. Because again, it just helps us to be more identifiable. So like with Sprout, I have the curly Q hat, I have the leaves that kind of flare up like this, and Miss so the Gnome has a pointy hat, uh, Button the Mushroom has a big old mushroom head, just stuff like that. To have garb that's really shapey, uh, really helps us to be identifiable and it also helps us to be otherworldly and kind of kind of cartoon looking if that makes sense. They specifically told us that we are going to be competing with CGI and video games animations and so they want us to be that impressive. <laughs> so uh, having a silhouette uh, a recognizable silhouette really helps with that. Other than that, um, there's really not any strict rules for our garb. Like we have to have a specific certain thing. Uh, the only thing would be the non-human skin with only some exceptions. Uh, I know that other festivals are a little bit different. I remember, I'm pretty sure they were talking about the Kansas City Renaissance Festival where they said that one, they needed their specific color scheme, but two, they also required colorful tights, like uh, like leggings, like, you know, skin tight pants. <laughs> that was one of the requirements. Generally, pretty much all festivals that I know of, having a hat or a headpiece of some sort is required. Sometimes it's required for vendor associates too. At the Texas Renaissance Festival, when I worked as a boothie, that was a requirement for us as well. It can be a hat, it can be like, a flower crown, something like that. Some festivals require wings, some festivals don't allow wings. Our festival is just your own personal choice. As long as your wings look good, you can wear them, but you don't have to wear wings. And I think that is enough about that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to shows. So at the Ohio Renaissance Festival, the Fae do not have a Fae show, unfortunately. I want us to have a Fae show, but as of right now, 2022, we don't. So our shows are the general cast shows, dance, choir, heart. Some other festivals do have Fae shows. At the Kentucky Highland Renaissance Festival, all the Fae had Fae shows. They had two shows that involved singing and telling stories. And then they had a third show 
which was called Fay Naming. They would give out certificates that have a Fay specific name for the patron who comes. And then for the little ones, they also gave out free fairy wings, which was, by the way, a huge hit. That show in particular was super popular at the festival. I have heard other festivals do things like tea parties, craft time, story time, dance, like face specific dance, face specific singing, play time or interaction time. I mean, there's there's all types of shows that the fake could possibly do. Now I'm gonna let Mint the Fairy explain what they do at their Renaissance Festival. Another thing to really take into consideration when you're thinking about joining a cast is the requirements, responsibilities, and the requirements that you are able to take on. Essentially, aside from being a character that performs in character throughout the day, there's also probably opportunities like a big cast show, a royal choir, maybe a scenario where people are performing little scenes in the lanes throughout the day for the patrons that keep track of something like that. And you can take all of those on at your interest level. Personally, I manage a ticketed event that my festival runs. We have a tea party craft story time event with the fairies that parents can buy a separate ticket to on top of their festival admission. Stories about our characters, do a craft together, serve tea and cupcakes and lemonade, I mean spring nectar. And it's a lot of fun, but it's hard work that goes throughout the season. We do write those stories, put together the craft, manage materials, and things like that. And that's not even a part of being in character all day at a festival. Um, most fairs do have a daily parade where you dance throughout the entire fair, being really loud and moving a lot the entire time. So physical activity levels that you're able to maintain are a big part of something to think about if you're interested. This information is all dated and changes from year to year. My brain is completely blinking on how to transition to this information, so I'm just going to say the number one thing that you can do to ready yourself for being a part of the festival is be really enthusiastic and interested and share what you're passionate about and be ready to be part of a team with all of the other people getting involved. Chances are if you're a first year you won't be the only one and you won't be a first year forever either, so come join us! Uh, once again, I am Mint the Fairy and here are all my socials if you're interested in checking out what I do and a teeny little ha! Till next time. All right, I think that is everything that you need to know about auditioning and joining your festival's fake cast. Um, if you think that I've left anything out, you can go ahead and message me, ask me any kind of questions that you want. I'll go ahead and answer them. I also run a little private fake performer discussions group. If you would like to join and you are a fake performer and you can hit me up, I'll invite you. That is on Facebook. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more kind of fairy workshop masterclass type videos, um, I will be making more. So stay tuned. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope to see you in the next video.